Howdy! I just wanted to make a quick video on how to set up corrective joints inside of Maya to kind of produce similar results to Unreal Engine's um, post-process animation blueprints. So we can see here, you know, these joints automatically move when we pose the skeleton with the control rig, as you can see there, right? And we can set up a similar system inside of Maya. This is just the Oh gosh, this is just the um, Unreal skeleton hooked up with a few extra things onto my own character. But you can see here that I have produced the same kind of result for those corrective joints um, where they bulge and allow the mesh to deform based on your posing there. And I was just getting started on the knee when I thought maybe this would be a good thing to record. So most of it. Pardon the skin weights, I gotta fix those up a little bit, but the knee, we wanna fix up. By default, the knee, um, we'll do this. The joints themselves will follow, oop, hold on. There we go. So we can see that the joints, the parent corrective root here, follows very exactly with the orientation of the bottom of the shin or the what they call it, the calf bone right um so the first step in sort of helping solve those corrective joints is we kind of want it to be at a half or even a controllable rotation so to do that we're going to hop into the node editor here we can see we've set up each one of the other ones up at the top here but we're hopping into the node editor and what we can do is we can, I'll just, uh, I won't clear this, but I will set it up on the left, on the right knee, which I haven't set up yet. But we can take our calf bone and we can add it in with this button. And we can take our corrective root, add it in with that button again, and we can select our other guys that we're going to eventually need to edit as well. Um, so what we want to do is we want to get that half rotation for our corrective root, right? So a handy thing to first do is just drop all those things down so we can see all their attributes. And we can grab the rotation that we need. So I know that if I'm looking at, you know, our channel box editor and I'm forcing a rotation here and breaking my rig, but I'm just seeing that the Z is really the only thing that we need to grab and to apply to stuff. So we can just grab the Z itself. Um, we can see that the Z has some rotation to it already. That's a result of me posing the skeleton to this rig. It doesn't really affect things. Of course, you know, in an ideal rig, you'd have zero on your joints and your bind pose, right? But uh, the Unreal skeleton itself doesn't have zero rotation even in its bind poses. So. If you're not in an ideal world, like I am, you'll need to get rid of that just so we can track how much we're actually bending the, the knee. We, we only really want to see how much we change it, not how much it actually is. So to do that, we can grab uh, plus minus average. We can change its attribute to subtract. We can get the uh, the rotation and input it in twice and then break the second connection and we'll see that uh, our inputs are exactly the same but when we change the first input right like so we'll see that the uh, first input changes but the second one remains how it was when we, when we first connected it which is the exact value which we're trying to get rid of so we don't need to do any copy paste stuff and out from here, we now have the pure amount of rotation that we need. Uh, and since the root bone itself actually is, uh, oh, it's almost zero. Well, it is zeroed out in the Z axis. So we definitely didn't want to copy the extra excess there. We can now take a divide node, multiply divide node, it's set to divide by default. 
Um, but we can take that rotation. Or sorry, it's set to multiply by default, so we can just multiply it by 0.5. And then we can take the output of our Z rotation here. We'll notice that if we do it right now, right, and we put it right into our Z, and we try and rotate this, we're getting double transforms because we're getting the parent rotation and then we're adding 0.5 to it. So we actually want it to be negative 0.5 because we want to be counter rotating it. And now when we rotate it, we see that it's kind of always going to be in between our thigh and our calf as we pose our feet. So that's a good first step. Now for Unreal, right, if we take a look at the, the knee here as we pose it, um, to kind of copy this motion, we can see that the skeleton, its joints pop out a bit, more so the back calf joint than the forward knee joint, but the knee does pop out a little bit as it approaches the front there. But it's mostly the calf that moves a lot, right? The knee is kind of just there to keep a little bit of volume, but we definitely want to pull with the calf and just catching now that their skinning isn't even necessarily the best either. But uh, so that's what we want to kind of mimic. To do that, we can use our value from earlier, our Z rotation, right, this guy, and we can get a set range. And what this allows us to do is we can get that value, right, I can just, I'm just going to put it into most of these things here. This is our actual set rotation, so if we po pose our knee here, right, take a look at that value, it's 70. We've rotated it 70 degrees negatively, right? The actual thigh, or uh, the difference there. The actual rotation is different, once again, because of that uh, negative 11 or whatever kind of offset that we had to start with. But we're going to take our range here, and we can start to manipulate our range. First things that we want to do, actually, is to know which way we're going. So when we pose like this, we know that the input is going to negative, towards negative 90. I like 90 degrees as like a, a benchmark for how far you can go. Now the thigh can actually probably go more close to this. 120 might be a good number as a min-max reference. So we know we're going to negative 120 as our input, so we'll want our old minimum to be negative 120 and our old maximum to be zero um, so as we approach negative 120 we want to reach some sort of new minimum uh, which will be whatever we determine but we do need to keep this offset in mind now the reason I copied all three uh, the Z to all three of them is just because sometimes I misremember which value I'm trying to get. Um, so I'm just copying the XYZ translation into our maximum. And the reason I'm putting it into our maximum is because when we're at zero, our old max, we want to be at our new max, which is our default transform position of this backward corrective knee joint. Now, if we find, kind of want to find which axis we actually want to do, we can hit control and start manipulating these different axes. And we can take a look that that axis is not right. Sometimes it's easy to note, um, like you can just drag this and only one number changes, but if all your numbers change, you'll just want to change your numbers manually. So we could change this Y, and that looks like the right axis. And we're going from negative five, and we're going further negative. So we can just put in our Y to be maybe more like negative 25. And we'll see how this goes. We'll input that into our new Y, just so that our things line up. And now when we pose our leg, we can see that our corrective shape 
functions. And that's actually looking negative 20 pretty good, actually, how far it has to go. Um, so now with the, uh, I mean, even this skinning is actually even pretty fine. I think I got to fix some skinning, but that's how you'd set up some corrective joints for however you need. You can also do it on multiple axes. For instance, the shoulders up here. We're grabbing that shoulder and doing the same thing. But these, uh, you can see that these corrective joints are moving in the X and the Y rotations, or sorry, translations to produce that corrective kind of motion. Uh, you'll have to determine the ranges with your own artistic eye. And it's not going to match up 100% with Unreal necessarily. Um, but it'll get pretty close and it'll allow you to, you know, actually pose your skeleton in ways that make it look okay um, without kind of being all weird, even though you got the skinning right for all these corrective joints, but it doesn't look right when you actually pose it in Maya because of, well, just the joints are moving, not how they move in your game or in just your rig if you have these corrective joints and you just want to use them, you know. So that's how you set up those kind of corrective joints uh, with math and nodes. I'm sure there's other ways as well, but this is the way that I've been doing it. So I hope that helps.